So it's like pulling teeth to get anything beyond, I mean, I just went to the hospital and had the baby. I mean, that's pretty much all they say, you know, it's really, really interesting. Now if I And how does that inform how they talk to you about birth? You die, you just gonna die. That's basically it. <laughs> the way a mother births is gonna affect how her daughter births, is gonna affect how her daughter-in-law births, how her niece, her cousin, her, her you know, c church member, whatever, it's, it's gonna be affected. listening to black women when we get pregnant as black women a lot of times we are just flooded with these traumatic stories Trauma. and i just don't yeah and it's just not fair <laughs> It's not fair to us to have to go into such what's supposed to be a happy, life-changing um, threshold into another sector of womanhood with all of these, these ghosts hovering around us and like threatening to steal our joy, you know. So let me ask you, uh, you said your family was very supportive. What were their birthing experiences like? So what are most birth stories like in your family? And how do you feel that those stories connect your story? Why would you, why do you think it's important to tell your story? Or, or what? Yeah, so can you talk a little bit about what the narrative has been in your family as far mm -hmm. as birth and how seeing examples of the opposite helped you to push through whatever obstacles um, mm -hmm. you, know, you faced coming from um, this traumatic narrative? So the the I mean the kind of I remember so I watched the podcast you did with your mom and yeah. I remember when she said um, that like birth was considered to um, be a thing where like you were excited about the baby and it's like but the like actual pregnancy birth spot was like yeah. the part you need to get over right and it was like a similar thing like that is like well, you just I mean my mom literally since I was young would tell me like because her mom literally told her this oh. where it's like having a like going through childbirth is like having one foot in the grave and one foot in a banana you pill. know but granted my mom her mom had you know six kids was poor in the yeah. city in the 50s you know all her kids are boomers so like the 50s and the early 60s so like who knows what yeah. like what happened what was allowed um and i mean then because of that being so direct to that all of kind of her daughters and her daughters-in-law um were also traumatized you yeah. know um and so they did the opposite they were like well now we have medication now we have you know all these other types of things we can we have insurance we have all of this um and they still ended up with traumatic experiences yeah. um potentially more traumatic than their mom I mean, having kids back when i was coming up i came from a big family of eight they never talked about their birth. Birth it was, a, it was like a, a, a grown folk business. It was nothing that children could even say. I'm you pregnant, you know. We don't talk about it. My family, I have asked repeatedly. My aunts, I remember before my mother passed, and asking her about my birth and my brother's birth. And it's like there wasn't a lot of attention paid to the birth. My mother's birth, my mother, um, she was a teen mom, so she started having children at the age of 15 and had my oldest brother and then had my other brother uh, 20, I believe, and then had me at 22. Okay. So she was a, a young mom, um, but she did have all of her children in the hospital mm -hmm. and had us all natural, so no epidural. So that was one thing that was um, that stuck in my mind. Um, I look. I always looked up to my mom as being just this powerful, resilient woman. Um, such a little lady. She's only five three, but she, <laughs> just a, so for her to have like all of three of us naturally with no pain medication and vaginally, mm -hmm. that was that's even empowerment. Yeah. You know, that was right. powerful. Like my mom and my aunt, both of them only had one kid, and I think mm -hmm. their childbirth experiences had a lot to do with why they wow. only had one kid. Like, might not be the ma the majority of it, but it it had something to do with the kids. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't ever see 
having a natural, you know, <laughs> yeah. childbirth. Thank you for asking this question because when I think about that, I do remember when my mom saying that she had us all natural with, with no medication. So that was also a spark in my mind to want to have a natural birth mm. with no medication. But and I was like, if, they, if I go into the hospital, they're going to try to give me medication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Thank you. You so, were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all close um, so, to God. You know? It is. It is. Yeah, so, so, um, those are the birth stories that I have heard about in my family. And so that's how it has affected me to mm. want to do a natural birth. You heard your mom's story like, oh, I didn't have medicine, however she told it to you. But to you, that that was a reality. Like, oh, okay, no medication, you know. But if when you become pregnant, you're bombarded with horror stories. And it's like, I had a C-section and, and you know, and this person had a C-section. Everybody had a C-section and everybody had these traumatic births. Now you enter it a little differently. And mm-hmm. they're going to come at you with all this fear because their trauma is resurfacing. You know what I'm saying? So... It, um, you're kind of showing, exemplifying why it's so important that we get these first stories on a positive note today for tomorrow's generation. I have the privilege of interviewing my mother. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting to hear about my own birth. Are they going to roll me out into this other room? they like, Everything gonna be here. They pulled my, my cot out. The bed was my cot. The virgin thing. I'm like, really? And they pushed it back in. People actually can sit on it. It was like a cot thing. It was dressed up with fabric and stuff. So, so how many birth stories do you have? But since you did touch that day, and now I'm starting to open up those three different experiences of the. I had you in Jackson, Mississippi with insurance, which made it a different, you was my first. So the first is, is glorified because everybody excited about their first kid. So now you're a marriage to them. Boom, you connected. Boom, getting a kid that looked like somebody. In there. Right, <laughs> right. So once the first baby is, I was in Jackson and I was at the, um, it was a meth. I think I was at the Methodist Hospital, but it was totally different. I was able to choose my hospital. Um, I was able to do a private room. It was really good. But when I had my second child, I was in Jackson, but I was at the university because I, I was on the system then, didn't have uh, insurance. So when we did go to a, a hospital of the, that we went to the had that had you. It was more like if you don't have insurance, we'll we'll give you to a county hospital. So they send you out to another hospital. So and that was a different wow. Thing about really cold. I felt really cold for the first right, time. right. No, that's why I said I had three births, three different experiences of those births. The first one, which was in um eighty in the eighties. Okay. Um, the, the, Late 80s, 88. That was at um, Methodist Hospital, Baptist, I'm sorry, it was Baptist Hospital in Jackson. It was a very good um, setting, private room, everything, it had good issues. So, it, and it was my first um, uh, birth, so I had so much support for the church. So that, that first birth made me excited to try to say, hey, I'm going to go with this again and get this attention. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was in Jackson, but it was at the um, University Hospital, so it was more of a. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, you're in a, a ward, actually. You're not in a room. You're in a ward. It's what they call it. But you have several pregnant people there. It's there in labor. So whoever. And they have all these students running around. So you really is so white. Yeah. Uncomfortable, uncomfortable, you know, in the mind and everything. So uh, that was the experience that I was like, I know. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't in tune with, uh, they didn't have midwives or none of that. I didn't know a lot about it. But that would have been a time that I was thinking I would have wanted to be at home. Yeah. <laughs> I put it all out and then take it out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was 
that was a bad experience. Okay, okay. So was, was it kind of like more like people just stumbling around or was like people pushing stuff on you or just kind of leaving you in a corner? Was, like, the center line, whoever was, was, was closest to the center, me, they hit first. You know, it was more first come, first serve based. Okay, so okay. What, what was the laboring part like before you got to pushing? Like, okay, what was the laboring part was more like um, they give you a little small information. And you say, you're in there, say, well, do you want to have an epidermis? First, you got, don't know really what it is. The only thing they tell you about it was at that time was, oh, it helps you when you're, you're birth, uh, when you get ready to um, birth, it will help with the pain. So, when I started to remember my first birth, it was natural. I didn't have an epidural anything. So the young lady when I was there had explained to me. So that helped me with the second to say no to things that I, I did not want. So the first, because the first one I was at the hospital where they explained things, they was like, well, this is what they do. And then I had a nurse who actually told me uh, that we can't give it to you until it's time to actually push the baby. So in a few minutes, once you hit your last uh, centimeter, you're gonna go and put it in right in the back, and you have to be real clear. She said, no, "If you don't have to have it, I wouldn't do it because if you move, this can damage your spine. And if a, and we can't tell you, we trying. They had me hook up to a monitor to wow. tell, tell exactly when the contraction. So as the monitor showed the contraction." We couldn't follow it because when it was a compression, I was supposed to go out. But I didn't, so that I was the, it, the machine was confusing because with the contraction, I did not respond as the machine said. So oh, okay. it's hard to this because this machine said, you Why are you not screaming? Why are you not yelling? You know? Right, right. So I was like, I don't know. It's just not feeling right there. And then I screamed. She said, Now this thing say you're not in contract. So what is it? You are the machine. So she said, By the time I can remember. Yeah. Oh, okay. for her because I don't know if it was huffy or more. Than <laughs> <laughs> that is so crazy. Oh my gosh. So wow. The me out of it because I was prepared for it in my mind because everybody was telling me to get it that I met that talked about pregnancy. Make sure you get the F during, you're going to you just get the F during. It's much better, going to relax you and stuff like that. But the lady told me, you're getting your majority pain when you're ready to push this baby out. You might have a couple of pains with that, but the epidural ain't going to take all that away. So, like I said, now I'm like, was it her fear or my fear? <laughs> I said, well, did it hurt that bad? Or was it, was it, were you, were you calmer? Was it that you went in expecting it to hurt more? And then it, like, what? Well, because we did do a Lamaze class, me and Maurice, it oh. kind of helped us. He didn't know how to do the breathing. So <laughs> with the Lamaze class, it was like I was I was really a, um, I was a sport. I was ready for this. It's like I'm prepared for this. So it was like I, I the pain was something I had in my mind that do I have to scream at everything? Right, right. <laughs> Can I moan? Or can I just crunch up? Right, right. So right. Have to scream. Right. Is know? it really that, you know, yeah, yeah. So when, that, when Lamaze taught us that everybody reacts to their pain different, and it gave us a different way to react to their pain, mm -hmm. does not mean that their pain is lesser or higher. It just means that that's what they release their pain. Mm -hmm. so when wow. I learned pain is released, I, I, I moan with mine. Okay, and that's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's the end of my scene. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny. That's funny you said that. And it's uh, actually pretty effective to moan. If you brought this stuff up, then now I'm opening up. It's like, I love it. Forget about it. It was around me, and they was, was like, You just scream. It's okay. Just scream. They was telling me to scream. And uh, I was with some more recent. I was like, 
I'm going to scream and tell him to get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's stressing me. So that's the only screaming that I could really realize because see, I had learned in Lamas, I needed my concentration. Mm-hmm, yes. I didn't need concentration to yes. know how to um, endure it. Right. So I couldn't concentrate on enduring it because by the time they got through talking, he's on the pain, I wouldn't prepare myself. Well, because pain works up, it don't just drop on me. Right. And you know, it kind of works up. Even if you snap your hand in the door, by the time your brain tell you, it starts to work up. Right, it right. I'm like, whoop. Yeah. So they wouldn't let me get ready for the pain as it comes on to escalate. Yeah. So I need to get so when the pain is, I'm ready to decide I'm a mall hollow school. Yeah. Right. Let me just let me get in my zone. Y'all, you know, I'm fine. Yeah. That's true. That's so true. That's so crazy. This is funny because uh, we never talked about none of this and I ended up doing the same thing. Yeah, because your dad freaks out more than I did. Really? You no, know, the pain in him did not get along at all. Oh, no, no. Wow. I, okay, I don't know why I would thought he would have been more calm than that. Well, now we on the subject then. What was he like as a support Now, like I said, I have more remembrance of him in the first um, child a lot. Uh, than the, the second the most, the yeah. most excited part on the second child for him was the, the birth when it's like, hey, my water broke or I'm t- it's ready. It's time. Yeah. Oh, nervousness thing. You see the, okay, okay, well, what we gotta do, you know, and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So, oh, what was he like I during birth? Was he like, uh, get the epidural? I'm scared. I don't know. You know, like. The first birth, he just was holding me and telling me what to do and everything like a coach. He did good because he's good at, at di- dictating, coaching. Okay. He did but when it was time that he thought he brought this camera and they were telling him, come on down to, to, to do the bird. You <laughs> don't hurry. Oh my God. <laughs> so that, that, that killed him for the second, third. So he only thing he did was hit the window, let him know when they were born. And... Oh my God. <laughs> so really? Left. That's for you, oh. So even the, the uh, Lamar uh, instructor made that that every man who thinks that they're ready to see a, the birth might not be ready. To oh see my birth. goodness! Make sure. And so she was like, "We got films. You need to look at birthing films to make sure is this something you think you want to see? Because sometimes it no, can turn you from the beauty of what's going on." Okay. okay. Now, if I think about the birth that where I was actually present, my first birth as a doula, I'm gonna call it, I was nine. My mom almost like died, like she started hemorrhaging. Um, my wow. aunt just had like a really bad experience from what it sounds like. Like it sounds like she was medicated, but still felt something like it didn't take. Yeah, right. If, if you were like at the public health Medicaid hospital, if you were not like pumping along and really close to delivery, they sent you back home. Um, there's other women who are around who, you know, like it was, it just is like a story upon story of like, I mean, legit these like near death experiences. <laughs> So my mother had brought her to the hospital and I remember at some point in the middle of the night, I don't even know how I woke up or how I got involved. I just remember next thing I know, I was in the living room with them. My aunt was puking in the bucket, rolling around, moaning and groaning. And my mom was like, Nikki, go get water, go get, go wet the towel. Um, and if it wasn't near death, it was just highly unpleasant. Like it was things like would not do again, would not recommend. Um, okay. You know, okay. or if you do, you just kind of got to like, grin and you know like bear down just do it get it over with and then okay. like you have your baby and like yeah oh, you, you know i'm running around doing stuff for them and i don't remember when i went to sleep or how that even transitioned i just have this snapshot of a moment where i was with my aunt and with my mother doing all of the things that we do i like being a doula is great i love being a doula trainer i like to use the term birth sister i love being a birth sister training trainer and creating more birth sisters to support us but guess what y'all before we had these titles we just did this this was 40 years ago and my mama was coaching in there and holding the hand and rubbing the head and rubbing the back and wiping the brow of my auntie while she was in labor i remember it so vividly and i remember 
as a little girl thinking, oh my God, did she, is this because she touched a boy? I am never touching a boy. Oh my God, never, ever, ever. Back in the day, or at least on TV, the men would just kind of be outside the room and there'd be a bunch of women in there, you know, um, supporting the, the woman or whatever. Is that a better model? You know, does that make more sense? Like, is that is that more natural? Or is it just a case by case well, thing, you know? Yeah. Well, some older woman would tell you, I had a young older, older lady tell me, it's not good. Actually, it was a positive wife. She said, it's not good for the men to, to actually okay. see the birth as a man mind is visual. He's very visual. He doesn't see beyond what he sees. He doesn't see anything else. He doesn't see nothing but what yeah. he sees. So okay. his heart text is going to be the same. With this gun, so it yeah, becomes yeah, yeah. Is he still gonna love you? He's gonna look at you the same way, you know. Yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> so, they, these older women was trying to keep a marriage, uh, juiced up. So, oh, but I think that was just the women people like that because they needed that security. I don't really believe it really was a true fact. I think it was just a myth that carried and then different. just socialization, like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had men tell me, like, I mean, we have drugs for a reason. Why would you ever do it without drugs? We really don't question the fact that, like, hospitals are supposed to heal people who are sick. And, right. like, why would we go and, like, have our baby there? And then I remember a few days later when we brought my cousin home from the hospital. And I was the person who got to hold her. This is before car seat requirements, okay? So I'm in the back seat literally holding my little cousin. And I sat in the back seat and um, I got to hold her on the drive home. And I remember just thinking, wow, because she did not do everything in secret with an induction, go in the hospital, come back with a baby, because I was able to witness that labor, I was able to make that connection that all of that pain and, and what felt, felt like turmoil and, and horrific experience, you know, to me as a little girl, it looks just hard, it looked horrible to me, but all of that transpired into my little cousin like and it was like it was i was like wow and i was able to make that connection and so for me um that was like one of my very first birth experiences and birth stories that i can tell um and it was just really really powerful um what did your process look like prepare for this you know um mm -hmm. especially going out like uh tr blazing this trail pretty much in your family um, or yeah so it was the trail yeah, so it kind of, it followed suit one, according to my, like, kind of, I'm sure if you'd ask my family, they weren't highly surprised. Um, <laughs> because, like, I'm just always, do, you know, like, I, like, was the first to go natural. I, like, moved across the country because I was like, I want to live in D.C. You know, like, so I'm just yeah. the, the, you know, extra it's one, eccentric. I guess. But I'm always kind of like, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm just kind of always, like, doing something. And at this point, I think they're really like, girl, whatever. Like, it's, <laughs> like, fine. Like, you know, like, yeah. sure. Um, <laughs> As long as you don't talk to us about it for too long. So <laughs> younger than my um, cousin who had her her unmedicated birth. So seeing her up close and then like actually seeing her have the baby and like being in the room when that happened, which I wasn't planning to do, but it kind of like escalated quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, oh, well, that's that. You know, like it just was done. And then she had a second child, did it again. Um, that was induced even and still was like, yeah, I mean, I'm not getting medicated. So seeing it up close and personal, um, really put it in it started to plant the seed this was still long before i like wanted like wanted to have kids but um it planted the seed of like i'm going like this is not impossible like it's just mm -hmm. like and i mean she did it with no prep you know like she mm. did it with which i wouldn't per se recommend but like yeah she just did it with i'm going to have a baby without medication i'm not gonna take no classes you're not about to do no you know like yeah I, like by the time we'll get into it kind of my process but like we did like that but with all the research all the classes all of this you know all like <laughs> all the things yeah. we did all of the things right right but to see her do it with no preparation just the will to like not get an epidural and be fine you know like, mm -hmm. like she made it through she did it again um i'm sure if she had another kid she would do it the same way it was like okay this is feasible for everyday people you know not just like the as they would call it like crunchy, crunchy black people yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know like just us with the, the hippies and the incense and the crystals and right. stuff like that um so there was that and then i just started following so i follow i think y'all do too belief in fatherhood and like his family okay yeah <laughs> and like yeah. i saw her last couple of births and just like seeing more black people kind of get into that space and like okay. have their babies in birthing tubs and i knew you know i knew about y'all um 
you know, just having kids and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. This seems like an interesting thing. And then I think the last person was like Kadeen and Duvall, surprisingly mm-hmm. enough. Okay. Um, Kadeen <laughs> talked about how her last one, she had uh, natural. She had unmedicated. She had the last two unmedicated, but the last one she had at home. Mm-hmm. And she was just talking about like the... Um, being at your house and what is it like to just like have your baby and then when it's time for you to rest you just go lay in your bed mm-hmm. you know and i was like eat your food and your refrigerator right, exactly yeah. like you ain't gotta go nowhere all that type of stuff and i was like okay cool but i knew um but yeah so i'm about to get into another all thing but like, that just seeing it and realizing that it's possible on top of like hospitals are weird hospitals are weird with black people um, yeah. and i just like <clears throat> i could not imagine leaving my husband with an infant you know like mm-hmm. just the idea of like oh you just you like had a baby shower and you did all this cute stuff and then you go into the hospital and then you just did Ooh, like, just like, what girl like, yeah what happened um and so like that just was something where i was like ah mm. <laughs> yeah i would not. like to not and you know i mean it doesn't matter the education the the whatever it just no it was a combination of those things actually yeah. it's so beautiful that you use the word birth if you ask me in 88 when you was born, they didn't call it the birth. Labor. I, yeah, that's it. How's the labor? Yeah, like like it's work. Yeah. And so when they asked her as the labor, it was like someone asked you, how was the funeral? Is that a really question? All three of them, you know, you have different experience, different birth. But at the end of each birth, it had brings the same joy. That's when the child is here. What my midwife was sharing with me, like if a mother and her her daughter does not have a good relationship, Mm -hmm. that can affect her during her labor as well. Yes. It can stall some things. There could be some blockage. And you know, with some home births and some moms that may be questioning it, but she's still present at the birth. And she's like, oh, I don't know that. You know, her energy can be off. Yes. And the, and the daughter is like, mom, you know, relax. Or mom, I got this. And she's like, look, now I don't know if this lady, if this midwife knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. We need to go ahead and take you to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So that, that shuts a lot of things down. So yeah. the relationship between the two is so important. Knowing the birth story is so important because it can bring on different type of trauma for you mm-hmm. to be like, you know what? I don't want that. I'm just going to go this route. Mm, so you so, so your empowerment is already cut off mm. you know you cut off your own empowerment and your own autonomy for your own body be based on somebody else's experience i just talked to another uh woman and that's exactly what happened at you know oh um, wow it wasn't her birth but it was someone she knew their birth their mom was there she was the doula and the person's mom was there and they ended up transferring to a hospital because of that reason of what you're talking about uh, the mom mm-hmm. wasn't really mm-hmm. um she didn't really trust birth oh, wow. as much so her daughter had a hard time trusting it too um and then i talked to someone else who just like i i love my mom but she just couldn't be there she just couldn't be there because mm-hmm. her faith wasn't as strong as mine oh, and, and i was uh just okay oh okay every baby was like you was Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Reese was nine pounds and Kayla was the smallest. She was seven pounds. Wow. Oh, that me, was the smallest. Was seven pounds was the smallest, baby. <laughs> but that was like, what of a this little baby? I was so used to like that. Yeah. It is. And this little, little, baby. Yeah. And he like, seven pounds, such a healthy size. I'm like, right. Oh, right. <laughs> What happened to my 10 and my 9, you know? But that was a good, I ate a lot of dough too, I guess. <laughs> what was the experience having gestational pregnancies like? Now it's like, oh my gosh, you're gestational diabetic. So you know, as like, soon I had the baby, the the, um, the symptoms left or diabetes. So I was warned to be careful that I could in, in my own age be a diabetic. Mm. Yeah, and even my, you know, even myself. I was in labor for five days in a home birth with my first ba- baby because I was having issues with my own yeah, that, that That healing part is so important. It is so important. Yeah. That's why I say, like, encouraging people to 
be mindful of the type of energy you have around you yes. because birth is so sacred it's yes. so sacred yeah birth is delicate like you said it's a it's a woman thing that women are doing and it's it's very important that women are at the forefront at the front of it of how it happens you're kind of showing exemplifying why it's so important that we get these birth stories on a positive note today for tomorrow's generation you know yeah that's that's so important. beautiful yeah that is so important. beautiful i would ask what would be your advice for women entering into the birthing phase of life and uh just uh, just your advice for i guess birth or going into birth. Well, well whenever I, I i just really feel that a woman should try to find her space for the first time once she's finally she's pregnant it is going to be about you and the, and the baby, of course. But don't let your surroundings choose how you should respond to your own pregnancy. Let your own pregnancy be a joy. If it was a joy for you when you first found out, keep that joy all the way through. And if it wasn't a joy when you found out, find that joy so you can have a healthy birthday. <laughs> well, that is great advice, Mama. Thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please uh, subscribe, share, um, like my my videos, and uh, check out some of the other videos. Bye, and, Grandma. Okay, and we we'll, <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Okay. <laughs>